Yo, Boz. I only saw one package of shiitakes. Oh, Andy has. A, no, you can't take my produce. Here, you can have the button mushroom. Mm -mm. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Hey guys, I am about to make cocoa van. I'm going to use a pressure cooker. The goal is to take a classic recipe and turn it into something that happens in one hour instead of four hours plus two days. So the first step in this recipe is marinating the chicken. And you have a choice. This one was set up for me yesterday. So it's the chicken already seasoned with salt and pepper and it's in the wine. But this recipe is also designed so that you can start marinating it when you start your prep. And it's still really, really good. I kind of, I didn't kind of, I designed, I really did intentionally design this recipe to see if I could start the marinade, make all the veg, and then just go straight into using the chicken. It's about 45 minutes that it sits in the wine. The contents are under pressure. And I think when that happens, it does force that marinade into the protein um, in a way that maybe takes advantage of the fact that it doesn't have the longest marinating. I don't know, just a theory. A lot of cooking is just, you know, making stuff up. Right, Andy? Yes, see, half of the time, and it cooks in a quarter of the time. <laughs> Molly laughed. She laughed at me laughing, which is different than laughing at my joke, but it's totally fine. I'm doing this in here cause it doesn't dirty your cutting board. It's also a cocoa van using white wine. I think you could drink a glass and a half and then put the rest of the bottle in with the chicken. That's gonna hang out. So, I am doing all of my browning in that pan because of two things. It's gonna give me more control and it's gonna give me better browning. You could do it in the Instant Pot insert. Couple of reasons why I don't like that. This is a really small diameter. It's also really deep. I'm not the tallest person in the world, so for me to be sauteing something down there on a really small circle, um, it just doesn't feel right. The other thing, this surface, um, it's not completely flat. It's a little bit curved going up this way. Imagining that water is your cooking fat or it's the surface, you can see that it's like a hill and it's higher in the middle, um, which means that this area in the middle is gonna be scorching because that's also where the heat element is, is right in the middle of the pot. It's gonna scorch and it's not gonna be fun. And then you're gonna have black bits in your pot. And then those black bits are gonna get mixed into your sauce. And then your sauce is gonna taste burnt. And then you're gonna leave terrible reviews. I'm using just thick cut bacon. And I'm gonna cut this first and get it into the pan. And while it's cooking, I'm gonna do the other prep. So I'm putting this in a cold pan on purpose so that it'll gently come up to temperature and start rendering. If you put bacon into a hot pan, it seizes up, it starts to brown, and the fat never really releases from um, the slices of bacon. So during that time, I'm gonna do the next item that's gonna go into the pan. So I'm just working in order of the recipe, which is the shiitakes. Save your stems for stock. Um, mushroom stems are one of the like best things to put into a vegetable stock or a beef stock. Part of what's happening here from the very beginning is this browning on the bottom of the pan. That's flavor. And I want, I want to keep building that through every step of the browning because this is also the basis of the sauce. This is really close to being done. I'm gonna take it off now. So I'm using a slotted spoon because I wanna reserve all of that bacon fat. All right, so now the mushrooms are going in here. It looks like a lot of um, fat, and it is. Mushrooms absorb. They're like little tiny sponges. I'm just gonna let them absorb that fat. And while they're doing their thing, I'll get the next ingredient ready, which is shallots and carrots, right? The carrots are gonna get super, 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 super tender. Because of that, I wanna keep them in pretty big pieces. And if you can't, find shallots or you have an onion that you want to use up, I would just quarter it and keep some of the root intact. Classically, it's made with pearl onions. Mushrooms got really quiet. So just looking for light browning.
So I'm going back in that pan, which is still warm. As soon as the butter is foaming, I'm gonna add the chicken skin side down and I'm just gonna kinda like yin and yang them. Oh my God, twins, <laughs> full twins. Um, coarsely chopping parsley, this for later, goes into the sauce. And I'm gonna make the, um, the beurre manier, which is a French word that basically just means mashed butter. So I'm doing this manually. You could use a fork. You want it completely combined. One thing I do like to do when I'm sauteing chicken um, or anything really where there's a good amount of fat coming off of things is occasionally lift it up. Make sure that the fat can flow back underneath, that it's not getting a dry spot or scorching the pan. So that's all of the mushrooms. And I'm just eyeballing half of the bacon and saving some bacon for sprinkling over at the end. Always makes people happy when you put the dish down in front of them and there's like visual bacon right there. So when these are nice and golden brown, let's take a look. I'm just gonna turn them on the second side. Really just to sear the second side. I'm not looking for them to get super brown. So I wanna save about a tablespoon of this delicious bacon, chicken, butter fat um, for, for cooking the carrots and the shallots. And again, I'm not looking for a ton of color on these, but just giving them a head start. And when the garlic looks like it's taking on a tiny bit of color and softening, just coming out of the raw stage, it's done. And in the meantime, I'm gonna layer the chicken into the pot. It's not all gonna fit in one layer and that's completely fine. And then any accumulated juices from the chicken resting while you finish up your vegetables, add to the pot. In a classic recipe, this would be brandy and you would flambe it. I thought that the dish, because of how rich it is, how much fat, fat is in it, the dark meat chicken, that it would benefit from a little bit of acidity. And so instead of the brandy, the stage where you deglaze the pan with brandy and set it on fire, I opted for white wine vinegar instead. And I want this to cook until it's almost dry and syrupy, but not completely dry. And I'm adding the marinade. Just sort of eyeball where you are when you start, and you're gonna go by half. I hate waiting for things. All right, so all in all, that takes about five or six minutes. You can see where it's come down below the line where it started, and just by eyeballing it, everything goes in together. I'm gonna do pressure cook, select a Rooney for time, 15 minutes. Pressure high, which is what I want. Delay is off because I want to get going right away. Keep warm. I'm also going to choose off for that and presto bango, be heating. And now it's going to take about 10 minutes for the pressure cooker itself to achieve pressure. And then it's 15 minutes plus a little time for natural release. The most important thing that I can do right now is keep this bacon away from people who are going to show up and try to eat all of it. Put it under a thing. Label it fish bones. She beeped. 15 minutes. Now I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes without releasing the steam for this last little bit of cook time. Hey Siri, set timer for 10 minutes. Roger that. T minus 10 minutes and counting. He said roger that. He's Australian. So what's happening in the pot now is that it's not under high pressure anymore and the, the temperature is gradually coming down. But if you were to look inside this pot right now, the braising liquid and that sauce would totally still be boiling pretty actively. Um, so by letting the pressure release naturally, you're kind of, it's still cooking. Everything in here is still cooking. All right, so we did our 10 minutes natural release fully natural and now i'm gonna oh, that's the thing not to do don't put your hand near the spouty spout spout which i did but i'm fine don't worry 
So the last step is just to thicken and like finish the sauce with a little butter. I'm gonna turn it back on, get it over to saute on high because I want this liquid at a simmer when I add the bourmonier, which is that butter and flour mixture that I made before. And I need there to be boiling liquid for it to thicken properly. And you can see that the, the color of the sauce right away just becomes enriched and it doesn't look like broth anymore. It actually looks like a pan sauce. And I'm gonna add that parsley that I held back to. Look, we're at a rolling boil. Why does this still say preheating? See, I think it thought that it had to get to temperature, but it didn't. That's why I don't brown things in the Instant Pot because that saute setting is so high and you can't really control it. I think more people will make coca van if it took 15 minutes. I mean, bacon waterfall. This is like a classic dish and it's a great dish for a reason, but people think it's really hard and it takes forever. So make more coca van, people. It's for you.